Well, good morning and welcome to St. John United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. A few announcements before we begin worship this morning. First, if you're on on Facebook Live, I invite you to use the comments section on the feed to say good morning to one another and let us know who all is watching and joining with us. Um, October Feast. The October Feast is planned as a drive through event for this year because of the pandemic and it will be held on October 26th from 5 to 7 p.m. or until the food actually runs out. Uh, there are sign-ups in the narthex to help, so if you can help out with that and donation of time or resources, we'd greatly appreciate that. Today is our annual blessing of the animal service. We will have a prayer of the animals in place of the prayers of the people which will include a blessing of our pets and a remembrance of of those who have gone over the Rainbow Bridge. We are also collecting donations for the Fort Defiance Humane Society. There is a basket here on the chancel steps and then also one at the central entrance to the sanctuary where you can leave your gifts. Uh, Dash will also be holding their fall bingo party October 21st in the Fellowship Hall. And we're looking for donations of little prizes. They can be used or new uh, for that event. Just drop them off here at the church before the 21st. And just a reminder that uh, we are, as far as mask wearing goes, we are following CDC guidelines, which recommends masks for everyone when meeting in groups indoors in areas rated at high risk. And currently our county is rated at a very high risk rating. It is going down, so we'll, we'll monitor that situation. But again, we follow the, um, the, the CDC recommendations that even if you are vaccinated, you need to wear a mask indoors when you're with a lot of people when there's high risks. And then, oh, thank you. And so now, as you can probably hear in the background, we're being serenaded by some barks and I don't know if I've heard any meows yet, but now let us center our hearts and our minds into a spirit of worship as Carolyn plays for us.
I invite you to rise in body or in spirit, and let's center our hearts in worship. What are you looking for? Who are you looking for? Is it God? Did you try in the east and the west? Did you look both north and south? Do Do not not fear, fear, for God God is here. Always. God is here and there. God is all around, never far away. Come, let us worship our ever-present God. Now I invite you to join together in singing Praise to the Living God, number eight in your hymnals, and we'll be singing verses one and three. I invite you to join together with me in calling upon God. Almighty God, we come into your presence, not really knowing what that means or how it is supposed to feel. We do not know how it should be, so all we can do is to tell you how it is, and perhaps that is all you wanted all along, for us to be honest and to come as we are. So here we are, perplexing God, some comfortable, some fearful, some confident in our faith, many less so than we were. We come with praises and our prayers, with our questions and yes, and our complaints. Eternal God, let the thinking stop now, let the flow of words be still, as we rest in your presence and allow your spirit to heal us, body, mind, and soul. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Now for our message for the young and young at heart. How many of you have pets at home or maybe had one at some time? Can you see some hands? I have two pets. They're here today, too, Willow and Baloo. Willow is um, Baloo's mama, and Baloo had 10, has 10 brothers and sisters, and there's a couple of them that actually live right here in Defiance. Have you ever noticed that when you spell dog backwards, it spells God? I think there's a connection there because I think uh, dogs can uh, teach you a lot about what it means to love someone and to be loved. Which, when you think about it, love is really what God is all about. And one of the things I love about my dogs is that when I'm having a bad day, I can talk to them. I can play with them or take them for a walk. We were actually dog-sitting a a couple of months ago and one of Blue's sisters and took all three of them for a walk. But the nice thing is the dogs will just sit and listen to me. Well, I think God can be that way too. When I'm angry or sad or I feel like God's ignoring me, I can talk to God. I can even complain to God, yell at God, and God will listen. And more importantly, it's God still will love me no matter how I address God. Well, a little while later, we're going to hear another Bible story about Job. And 
Lots of terrible things happen to Job. So sometimes <clears throat> he just feels lost and lonely and sometimes even angry with God. <clears throat> Job continues to try to talk to God and even complains to God. And that's okay, because God can take it, and God will listen. So to celebrate God's love, <clears throat> excuse me, through the pets that we have, we're going to switch over to our blessing of the animals this Sunday in place of our prayers of the people. And we'll be praying for our pets, past and present, and bless them for giving us so much love. So if you're in person, um, there was a separate bulletin at the entrance that looks like this that you should have grabbed um, for the, the file, that part of the service. But I will have everything on the screen as well, so if you didn't grab it, that's okay. And the same thing for those of you who are at home. Uh, everything in this bulletin will also be on the screen. So let's pray before I enter that. Holy and living God, we are so grateful for the animals we have that keep us company and that remind us of your living presence and the way they continue to love us and care for us as we love and care for them. It is their lives that we give thanks for and offer up for blessing in the next part of our service. And all this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. So you join with me in the opening for the blessing of the animals. Bless the Lord, all you created, and forget not all God's love. Let us pray together. Most awesome creator, grant your people grace to renounce gladly the vanities of this world, that following the way of blessed Francis, we may, for love of you, delight in your whole creation with perfectness of joy. O oh God, you have made us and all living things. You are even more wonderful than what you have made. We thank you for giving us these pets who bring us joy. As you take care of us, <clears throat> so also we ask your help that we might take care of those who trust us to look after them. By doing this, we share in your own love for all creation. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now a reading from Genesis chapter 1, verses 23 through 28 and 31a, and I'll be reading from the message. It was evening, it was morning, day 5. God spoke. Earth, generate life, every sort and kind, cattle and reptiles, and wild animals, all kinds. And there it was. Wild animals of every kind, cattle of all kinds, every sort of reptile and bug. God saw that it was good. God spoke. Let us make human beings in our image. Make them reflecting our nature so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings. He created them godlike, reflecting God's nature. He created them male and female. God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill the earth, take charge, be responsible for fish in the sea and birds in the air, for every living, living thing that moves on the face of the earth. God looked over everything God had made, and it was so good, so very good. So let us give thanks to God for the gifts, for all the gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea, and for the richness of mountains, plains, and rivers. We thank you, God. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, we thank you, God. For all creatures that breathe and move and have life, we thank you, God. For the songs of birds and the loveliness of flowers and trees, we thank you, God. For the trust you have shown in giving into our care, these are pets. We thank you, God. That each pet here may be treasured with care, we pray to you, God. 
that we may love and honor all your works, O God. We pray to you, God, that we may continue to grow in our grateful enjoyment of your abundant creation to the honor and glory of your name, now and forever. We pray to you, God. <clears throat> and now uh, you're invited. I will come down into the uh, sanctuary, but you're invited to call out the names of animals and pets that you may have concern with, who may be ill, uh, dying, or endangered, and, and those you have loved in your past lives, past or present, who may not be here. And if you're joining us online, you can type your pets' names in the comments on the Facebook page. Creator of all, today we would remember those animals who have helped us become better persons by their love, animals for whom we have concern, animals who need our prayers, and we would remember any names of pets, animals, past or present, that you may wish to call out. Our preacher, our friend Penny's dog preacher, who is undergoing cancer treatment. Gabrielle, Gabrielle. Daisy. Daisy, and Dean. Our, cat, who's Archie, who's 17. No. Snowy. Buckwheat and Pepper, Willow and Baloo, <laughs> Sadie and Sassy, Pucky. We have some in the Narthex too. Pardon? Camel and Rebel. Good idea. Eric's always thinking. <laughs> yes. Kelsey Cooper and Biggie Smalls. Kelsey Cooper and Biggie Smalls. Yes. And Louie. Um, Georgia, you all know she's been in college and everything. And she has a dog. We have Cooper now. But she went to a shelter. <coughs> was $5 for any pet you wanted that Saturday. Well, she saw one on TV, and when she got there, he was still there. Now, Cooper's five pounds. <laughs> He's a chihuahua, a spoiled rod, but he has really been good for her. She took him to Colorado for her mental health, for her self-care, he had been a godsend, and he only cost five dollars. <laughs> five dollars, and he's five pounds. <laughs> so a dollar, a dollar a pound for Cooper, and what a blessing in her life. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oliver, Maxie. Oliver, Maxie, and Twist. And Cooper has been a godsend for Ray, too. He's at home every day. He's a stinker now. She paid $900 for him. <laughs> 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 but I will stick with the five and the five. And he's not 900 pounds. <laughs> So now if you have animals present in the sanctuary, you can bring them forward for... Um, and, uh, excuse me, from the Rumbles, Libby. And another from Libby, Libby should be prayed for. If you're in the sanctuary, you can bring your, your pets forward. I only saw dogs. I've had hedgehogs show up before. 
and rabbits, <coughs> but it looks like we only have dogs this morning. You can bring your dogs, your pets forward for a blessing, and if you happen to be um, on Facebook, you can also post a picture of your animal, your pet, and um, give us your name, and we can also say a blessing for them remotely. Also from the fetters, we've got uh, Chester and Annie. And Chester and Annie from the fetters. Hi, Dean. Hi, Dean. You are blessed in the name of God, our Creator, Jesus, our brother, and the power of the Holy Spirit. May God's love strengthen and comfort you, and may you find joy in each other's presence and in the presence of God. Amen. <coughs> Come here. Baloo. You are blessed in the name of God, our Creator, Jesus, our brother, and the power of the Holy Spirit. May God's love strengthen and comfort you, and may you find love in your human companions and joy in each other's presence and with God, and Willow too. <laughs> Hope. You are blessed in the name of God, our Creator, Jesus, our brother, and the power of the Holy Spirit. May God's love comfort and strengthen you, and may you and your human companions find joy in each other and in the presence of God. Amen. And Jake? Hey, Jake. Jake, you are blessed in the name of God, our Creator, Jesus, our brother, and the power of the Holy Spirit. May you find strength and compassion. May God's love strengthen and uh, comfort you, and may you and your human companions find joy in each other's presence and with God who created us all. Amen. Do we have any from home? Okay. And in the slide that uh, is up on the screen, you can see our history of animals. When Laurel and I were first married, we had Allie and Jesse. Jesse was Allie's mother, and I was holding Spooky, my first cat, who lived to be uh, 19 years old, and then um, Quinn, and then Slippers, who also lived to be 19, and then uh, Tigger, who um, became a shop cat when we moved from Michigan, was in an antique shop. Um, and then Finnegan, who we had when we first came here, and he died in 2016 at 12. And of course, um, Willow and Baloo. So that concludes our blessing of the animals service, and uh, we hope to bring it back again next year. So all that we have and all that we are comes from God. So I invite you now <clears throat> to gather um, whether if you're at home to put together an envelope to send in your gift or connect with our uh, tithely account as shown on your line. And here in the sanctuary, there are offertory plates at the center entrance to the sanctuary. And just out of thanksgiving for the abundance that God has given us, I invite you to give generously towards the building of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven.
invite you to join together with me in the dedication of these gifts to God's work. God, if you are there at all, you are greater and wiser and more generous than we can ever comprehend. You deserve the best of everything that we have to give. Our deepest love, our hardest questions, our most stubborn perseverance, our most effervescent joy, our bitterest sorrow, our frankest honesty, our truest integrity, our wettest tears, our heartiest laughter. These gifts that do matter, we promise always to do our best to bring along with the money that does not unless the others are offered with it. Amen. Now I invite you to sing together Almighty God, your word is cast number 318, verses 1 and 2. join me in prayer. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors, but in these last days, God has spoken to us through Jesus Christ. Open your hearts and your minds to God's word, that we may see God's light. Amen. The reading for this morning is taken from Job chapter 23, verses 1 through 9, and 16 through 17, and I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. Job answered, Today my complaint is bitter. My strength is weighed down because of my groaning. Oh, that I could know how to find him, come to his dwelling place. I would lay out my case before him, fill my mouth with arguments, know the words with which he would answer, understand what he would say to me. Would he contend with me through brute force? No, he would surely listen to me. There, those who do the right thing can argue with him. I could escape from my judge forever. Look, I go east. He's not there. West, and don't discover him. North, in his activity, and I don't grasp him. He turns south, and I don't see. God has weakened my mind. The Almighty has frightened me. Still, I'm not annihilated by darkness. He has hidden deep darkness from me. The Holy Spirit breathes into us these words. A couple of years ago, I was chatting with another pastor in town after one of our defiance ministerial prayer meetings. And I would guess that he's probably about 30 years younger than me or so and pastors one of the new church plants that sprung up um, here in Defiance in the last 10 or 15 years. Anyway, we got to talking about funerals after bringing up a prayer for a family for whom I was doing a funeral that week. And this pastor asked me how many I had done, and I told him I really didn't know, but more than I could count in my head. He started his ministerial career about a year after I did, but I, I but said that he had only officiated at three funerals in that time. Now I guessed at the time, as I did try to do some quick math in my head, that I had done at least more than 30 in that same time period. So before I started writing this sermon, I checked the funeral folder in my computer and discovered that I've either officiated or participated in at least 58 funerals in the last um, 
11 years, a couple of which occurred during my seminary internship back in 2007, and about four which were for my own family members. And of course, in addition to those funerals, I've been present at several deaths in my role as an on-call chaplain at Mercy Hospital. Now, in contrast, I've only done seven baptisms and 28 weddings in that same time. So when I went into ministry, I never imagined that death would play such a prominent role as my role as a pastor. When I was doing my seminary internship, my supervising pastor had asked me at the time if there was anything that I felt that I needed to work on. So I confessed at the time that I always struggled with death and dying and knew that there was some baggage that I was carrying that I needed to really unpack and deal with. So she asked me to, to walk with a young man in his mid-30s from her congregation who was dying of brain cancer. And he also had a wife and two young children. And as I worked with this young man and his family, my supervising pastor helped me work through all the different conflicting emotions I had had in the process. And it made a difference, since I now find it profoundly meaningful to walk with someone as they complete their physical journey on this earth. And it's not that I don't feel grief, because I do very deeply. But now I understand death is a part of life. It's a holy moment. And I find that there, there may be times in our lives when we feel deeply alone, perhaps even abandoned or weighed down. But God is big enough to bear our lament, our grief, and either, even our anger. And we are still loved. Well, we continue our journey with Job today. But we jumped over a lot of the story, and we don't have time to cover it all in worship, so... I invite you to take some time to open up Job and read through its entirety yourself. So unfortunately, Christians tend to focus on the first and the last couple of chapters that kind of bookend the story. But the middle part, a little of which we'll explore this week and next week, is filled with wonderful poetry as Job contends with four of his friends and, and with God and, and really contends with himself. Because there's so many circumstances that he finds himself in. Now, throughout the story, Job wavers in his confidence. He vacillates between ruining the day he was born, wishing he was dead, to arguing confidently that he is faultless, complaining to God about the situation, and calling God on the carpet for how God treated him and how, God, how Job feels God treats other innocents who seem to be taken advantage of by others. And then at times, we even see Job giving up altogether, resigning himself to letting whatever may happen, happen. But Job's integrity never seems to fully leave him. He never gives in to the pressure from his friends to simply say to God that he's guilty and beg for forgiveness, for Job knew he had nothing, done nothing wrong. Despite the injustices of his own situation, Job cannot let go of the fundamental belief rooted in everything that has shaped him that God is a God of justice. Now, one of the difficulties with reading Job is the way in which the story is translated into English. Sometimes the original Hebrew is a little uncertain because the ancient texts that are available, well, they're often fragments which don't always agree with each other. And sometimes the Hebrew is uncertain because the manuscripts only use consonants and have no punctuation or sentence or paragraph breaks. This can lead to different interpretations depending upon who's reading it, depending upon which vowels are added and how word breaks and sentence breaks and paragraph breaks are assumed. And other times there's disagreement because the Hebrew fragments don't agree with the slightly less ancient Greek translations of those fragments. Now, we experience a little of that in the verses that we heard today. In the second verse of chapter 23 in the Common English Bible, we heard today, uh, which, which we heard today, follows the gist of the generally accepted Hebrew in saying, Today my complaint is bitter, my strength 
is weighed down because of my groaning. However, the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible gives us, today also my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy despite my groaning. groaning. With a note <clears throat> that the New Revised Standard Version follows the Septuagint and Syriac Greek rather than the Hebrew, which it says the Hebrew states, my hand rather than his hand, just like the common English Bible implies. Now, interestingly, most literalists follow the King James Version of the Bible, which tends to follow the Septuagint, which is the earliest Greek translation, rather than the original Hebrew fragments, some of which weren't even accessible when the King James Version was translated to English back in the, I can't remember if it's the 15th or 16th century. So I find it difficult to understand how people can say, especially those who rely on the King James Version, how they can say the Bible is inerrant when there is just so much uncertainty as to what the text actually said. Anyway, that's getting way beyond what I wanted to talk about, but it helps to accentuate the point that God is still speaking as we read and discuss the Bible to determine its meaning for us today. It also helps you to understand why in sermons, I'll often say context is important or even that I may be wrong in my understanding. But back to verse 2. In our reading from the Common English Bible, Job's strength is waning because of his groaning under the, the pressure that he's been put under. In the New Revised Standard Version and the New International Version, it appears that Job believes God continues to apply pressure to Job despite his groaning. And the point is, at this point, Job is really struggling. But despite his struggling, the rest of the verses seem to show that Job's integrity still holds. Job still believes God is just. It shows that Job believes that if only he could find God, he knows God would listen to him and would hear his arguments against the way he's being treated. But Job can't seem to find God, no matter where he looks. He believes God has abandoned him. Have you ever experienced something like that, the feeling that you were utterly alone, that you did not know what to do? If so, you're not alone in experiencing that. I've experienced it. Jesus did. And there have been others who have confessed to the same thing. Because as a reminder, I mentioned last week, the Gospels of Matthew and Mark have Jesus uttering his last words on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus felt utterly alone and abandoned on the cross. Now, in the 16th century, St. John of the Cross wrote about su just such an experience himself, and it's often referred to as the dark night of the soul. He wrote, Both the sense and the spirit, as though under an immense and dark load, undergo such agony and pain that the soul would consider death a relief. Well, it was revealed after Mother Teresa's death that she also suffered from just such a dark night of the soul for a very long time, nearly 50 years. 50 years of feeling abandoned and alone. Now Job argues that if he could only find God, he knows that God would listen to his arguments, that God would vindicate him. Because Job knows that he's done nothing wrong, that he has nothing to confess to that would remove his suffering from him. He knows that the prevailing wisdom we talked about last week is just simply not true. The prevailing wisdom being do good, follow God's law, get rewarded, do bad, get punished. And he knows that that's not true. Bad things do happen to good people. And even though Job knows this in his heart, he still can't find God no matter where he looks. And Job argues, but God is silent. 
God appears nowhere to be found. Well, last Sunday was the beginning of Worldwide Mental Illness Awareness Week in the United States. The four-county Ohio National Alliance on Mental Illness, NAMI, had planned to kick off the week with a walk of hope at each of the county courthouses of Defiance, Fulton, Williams, and Henry County. But unfortunately, due to the weather, the walk was canceled. Now, prior to COVID, NAMI held a walk and candlelight vigil here at St. John UCC to kick off the week. And the goal of the walk and the vigil is to help normalize mental health challenges and overcome the stigma associated with mental illness. No one needs to go it alone when they're feeling overwhelmed or even abandoned. There's no shame in seeking help to get through a time that may seem hopeless. Well, in our last two verses of our reading today, Job seems like he's almost given up hope. God has weakened my mind. The Almighty has frightened me. And Job can't find God. God appears to be silent and won't answer Job's cries. Job feels utterly abandoned. And still Job hangs on to his belief that God is just, that in the end, God will vindicate him. Or has he? In our common English version, we heard the last verse of today as, still I'm not annihilated by darkness. He has hidden, he has hidden deep darkness from me. Now in this interpretation that we heard, Job is not completely overcome with darkness and believes it is God that is keeping him from being overwhelmed. And yet here we find another example of where there can be different interpretations of the ancient Hebrew and the Greek. Because another interpretation from the New Revised Standard Version reads, If only I could vanish in darkness, and thick darkness would cover my face. In that interpretation, sounds completely like Job is ready to give up, as if he were looking for a way to escape, a way to be rid of the pain. Now from the verses that come before our selection, it seems that Job may be reinforcing his belief that God is just, that God will keep him from harm. And from the verses that come afterward in chapter 24, it then appears that Job is at his wit's, wit's end. For the discourse that follows continues the lament, calling out God for not acting against the wicked while letting the poor, the widows, and the orphans continue to be taken advantage of. And yet as the discourse continues, Job's integrity returns. He holds on to his belief that despite everything he has experienced, he still knows God is just. He knows that God will vindicate him. I mean, I think if most of us were honest, when we're in the depths of despair, many of us are not like Job. Many struggle to maintain their integrity, their faith in God. When we are in the darkest places, it can become so difficult to see anything at all. I remember when I was about 10 years old, my Aunt Mary, on whose birthday I was born, took me to Mammoth Cave in Kentucky, and we were there on vacation. And we tour toured one of the caves there, and we went deep underground. And at one point in the middle of the presentation, the tour leader had the lights in the cave turned off. I had never, ever been in a place that was so dark. I couldn't even see my hand right in front of my face. Had they not turned the lights back on, I doubt that I would have been able to find my way back to the light, to life outside the cave, without help from someone who knew the ups and downs and the turns to get out of the darkness. And that's what it's like for someone who struggles with mental illness. Their vision may be clouded, so clouded that all they can see, all they can feel is deep despair, and they long for escape. Sometimes the thing they need most 
It's for someone to simply sit on the ash heap with them, to, to hold their hand, to anchor them in space and in time until they can begin the work of finding their way out of the cave. Sometimes, sometimes they may need to rebalance the chemicals in their body so that the receptors in their brains, those that can help them see the light, are opened and allowed to function normally again. There is absolutely no shame in that. And there is no shame in expressing your emotions. There is no shame in cursing God and getting angry and lamenting the things that torment your life. God's shoulders are big enough. God can and will listen. Because if you believe that Jesus is God incarnate, God knows what it feels to be abandoned even unto death. God knows our pain. Ile, ile, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In all that Job has endured, the loss of wealth, the loss of hopes and dreams of the family, physical pain and disfigurement, it's the feeling of being cut off from God, abandoned by God, that fuels his lament. And Job does not hold back. He does not keep his emotions suppressed, but lays them out for God to hear. And God hears and responds, some of which we'll encounter next week. So if you are struggling with all that life has thrown at you, may you have the strength to, bear, to lay bare your lament and know that God can handle it. If you know someone who is struggling, May you have the courage to sit with them and listen, to be God's presence so that they may find the light that they need to hold on to. And may you know that when it is so dark that you can't see your hand in front of your face, God is there in the darkness and in the silence. May you know in your heart that you are never, ever alone. Amen. Now, as the pandemic continues to linger, I invite you to pray together with me the prayer in the time of the pandemic. And the one that's on the screen is slightly altered from the one that was on the printed sheet. As the number of cases begins to fall in our area, may we be mindful of those who may still be at risk, whether vaccinated or not. May we be compassionate toward those who have a need to continue to take precautions for reasons unknown to us. May we who live in countries with more resources have compassion and share in our abundance when we see those in countries who are struggling. May we who can take vacations and eat at restaurants respect those whose lives depend on their jobs in the service industry. May we who are worried about our investments remember those who live paycheck to paycheck May we who have the freedom to venture from our homes remember those who have no home. As fear and misinformation grip our country, let us choose love and truth. As we return to being able to physically embrace one another, let us be compassionate enough to simply let our presence be the living embrace of God for those for whom physical contact may be uncomfortable and help all of creation flourish. Amen. I invite you to join together in singing our final hymn, How Firm a Foundation, number 407 in the hymnals, and we'll be singing verses 1 through 3.
We'll skip number three. Go now, walk humbly, be loving, be fair. We will ask questions. We will make discoveries. We will be hopeful. We will love and care. Be the person you th- your pet thinks you are. Go now. God is with you. Our worship has ended. Our service begins.